It was Ash Wednesday, uh, Cockatoo, 16th of February, 1983. Myself as F First Lieutenant of the Brigade and my crew of four others were held back at uh, Monbolk for town protection. It was late in the afternoon, a police officer arrived in a car and he informed us that there was a, a smoke sighting uh, out near the Macclesfield Cemetery. I was the driver and, and, and officer in charge. There was um, Ross Lever in the front and also on the back was Brian Messenger, Colin Bednars and Andrew Bain. As we got out to the, uh, the east side of uh, Monbolg, it became very clear that the fire wasn't at the Macclesfield Cemetery, but further across towards Cockatoo. The fire was in Wright's Forest and met up with uh, the Macclesfield Austin and also Ken Hall, who was their first lieutenant at the time, and also in the vicinity was the Emerald Tanker. We emptied the tankers onto the fire at that point and after we ran out of water, we then moved out through Wrights Road down to Cockatoo to fill up at the hydrant. We picked up Ian Woodhouse, who was an Emerald member, and he came along as our guide as Ian knew the township of Cockatoo. Nothing in our previous experience or training prepared us for what was going to happen next. I think it was about 1900 hours and the radio traffic was absolutely frantic. We were getting southwest wind change warnings. We moved away from the hydrant and almost without warning, the fire came out of Wright's Forest with enormous ferocity. The whole eastern flank of the original fire became the main front. Ross yelled at me to, for goodness sake, shut the window and his overalls were starting to, to light up. Almost straight away, I couldn't touch the glass, it was that hot. I made it my mission to uh, keep the truck moving. The, heat, the flames were going under and over us, and the sheets of flame going across the road, I could just pick up the white line. And the engine was faltering, but as quickly as the fire started, we drove out of it, we got out of it, we got away with it. I pulled up on, on the side of the road uh, to take stock and see how the guys were and everyone seemed to be okay. And it was obvious that we'd done some damage to the, uh, the alternator of the truck, so we thought we'd better get back to the uh, town centre while the truck was still rolling. When we arrived back at the main street of Cockatoo, two shops had burnt down. There were cars lining the footpath that were burnt out or burning. The fence on the other side of the street was on fire and um, people were, I think, in a bit of a daze. People were just sort of wandering around. At that point, um, our captain, Don Fleming, came rocketing into the town and he was uh, very concerned. We were already on the missing list because our radio had actually died with the, uh, uh, the alternator problem. The district mechanical officer and his truck arrived out of nowhere and uh, repaired the alternator for us. It was then that um, Don instructed us to uh, drive out towards Gembrook to try and plot where the fire was actually at at that point, where it was going to, and try and report back. Another tanker uh, from Bales had arrived and uh, uh, he asked them to tag along. As we drove along, I, I recall there was a, a big uh, steel shed uh, open at both ends and as I looked through it, it was totally involved in flame but there was nothing inside it that I could see was actually burning. It must have been just the dust. As we got further along, uh, we came across a horse that was um, 
Uh, seriously burned. Poor fella just standing on the side of the road, doing, but there was nothing we could do about it. And as we got a bit further along, a lady came out and flagged us down and uh, told us that she couldn't find her neighbour, could we go and have a look? As we got down a little bit further, they were big properties, um, the progress of the truck was halted by some fallen trees, so we had to leg it into, into the place. We circled around the house, um, noting that the house hadn't burnt. However, there were red gum sleepers that were buried in the ground as steps, and they were burning. As we got further around the house, um, we found this fellow. Uh, he was an artist. He had a little artist studio at the back corner of his property, and obviously he was trying to make his way back to the, the house the way he was lying on the ground. His gum boots were still burning, um, and we had to uh, put those out with a, with a knapsack. Ross went back to the truck to report back to the control point and eventually an ambulance came. Also on board the ambulance was a police officer and as they approached we heard the gunshot as the, uh, as the policeman put the horse down. When they uh, came in, we'd been waiting there for some time, we couldn't leave the premises um, because of the deceased. The policeman was very cross with us because we used water to put the gum beads out. Everything was very tense. All of what I have just said is very vivid in my mind, although after 30 years, uh, the actual times of when things happen or some of the details uh, are very vague. Any fire containment or suppression during that fire storm was impossible. One thing I've made it my mission since that day was to get the message out to all our new uh, firefighters is what happens with southwest wind changes and the effect they have on fire behaviour.